Hello guys, welcome back to another reaction video here on Our Eyes Your Eyes. I'm ready to watch episode 3 of A Blue Period. But before starting this video, I just want to remind you to subscribe to the channel, click on the notification bell, leave a like to support me, and join me in this great adventure. Okay, in the previous episode, we saw that Yatora received the approvals from his mom and he joined the art club. Let's see what's going to happen now. I can't wait to see how this story goes on. Are you ready to join me with this? Check it out. Come on, Yatra, let's see what you can do. Wow, it means that you're pretty skilled. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, he didn't he doesn't want to become your friend, I guess. There's a sort of competition maybe. <laughs> uh, maybe he made that mistake, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but this is good because they can practice about this. Let's take notes in the window. <laughs> oh, let's see his drawing. And he didn't even join the, the art club, right? He is a genius. <laughs> Whoa, yeah, it's a genius. Eh, but there is this competition, as I was saying. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you've grown a lot actually, but that doesn't mean that it's that's your end. No, that's not true. Even if someone can make some things before you, that doesn't mean you can't. Yeah, exactly. When you reach the, the that level, it means you can't improve anymore and that's it. You don't feel satisfied as the first time. So yeah, she's right. Is this a true saying? Oh, maybe yeah. <gasps> that's him. No, exactly. That's the amount of the set. <laughs> oh, Yatora, please don't underestimate your qualities. He remembered the name. The but that was good that he was saying see you it's already a step forward they can become friends and Yatora can get in touch with great and real friends okay oh I hope so. <laughs> now there was a, a mistake. <laughs> uh, 
And she doesn't even seem the same girl. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so he is. Exactly. Everyone he has his or her own style. Just to improve the skills of that style. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you have to start from somewhere. If you don't know what's the style that you like, it's a mess because art has many styles. But that's true! Okay, later I'm going to tell you in the commentary what I think about Takahashi. If you say so. <clears throat> ah, so he know many things about Takahashi if you ask uh, Haruka. For now, but later it will be different. Because they already chose their path, and you didn't. It's just about time. No, exactly. Yeah, it's a pleasure for eyes instead of a a pleasure for mouth. <laughs> this is good. Ah, that's Yuka. Right? Oh, what's wrong? What's wrong? Yeah, like Mustang. What? Oh my, I was uh, thinking that she was a girl. I mean, she's a girl. You felt it was something pitiful to you, right?
No, because to me, you were a girl. <laughs> Wow, this story is so deep. Yeah, exactly. That should be like this. He is not a stranger, he is just a person, no matter the gender. Oh my Wow, so you have to participate then huh? Whoa, if even Mori-san was the fifth <laughs> You have to gambarimasu Wow, another genius. Ah, okay, the sister. It's a talent of uh, coming from the family itself. <laughs> See, competition, I told you. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it means this competition is quite hard. But put your heart in what you do. Feel free to use the colors as much as you like. Now she didn't use lots of details too, as much as you. Look, the more we go on with this story, the more I believe that the contents here are so deep, so important subjects are involved in it, especially subjects that they can let you discuss with other people, to confront yourself with other people's opinions. And that's why yeah, it's coming from a seinen manga also for this, I guess. Even if the protagonists are uh, high school students, that doesn't matter that it can't be a seinen manga. And in fact, this is the best example. These deep subjects in this story can let the story evolve to something even greater and to explore our feelings too, not just the feelings of the protagonists. I started with the Yatora, and I wanted to say that he's always underestimating himself, no matter the level, no matter who he has in front of himself. He's always paying attention to judge himself in the wrong way. He wants to underestimate all the times so he's getting in touch with other people who had uh, uh, longer experience about art or people who are even uh, older than him. In the case uh, of this episode, the Yatora is uh, feeling inferior because in front of him he has uh, people like Takahashi or people like uh, Haruka or uh, people like uh, the sister of the sister uh, who won the competition. Uh, sorry, I don't remember her name right now. All these people are on another level, not because Yatora can't reach that level but because they have more experience, because they are already well aware of what they want to become and they are well aware of their own style. And in fact, even the new sensei 
was explaining him, look, the most important thing is that you find your own style. And once you decided what your style is, you can proceed, you can create a path full of success because you are an expert of that sort of style. And it doesn't mean that you are going to erase all the other forms of art or all the other styles, but it's just that you prefer to go on with that style and to increase uh, skills with that style. All this thing means that it would be better sometimes to focus on one thing only instead of focusing on everything because the more things you have, the more you can't focus as much as you want. It's like as if you are a tiny fish inside of an ocean and the ocean is art. Art is uh, so immense and you can't uh, focus on everything. You just have to follow your path and you as a tiny fish, you have to find your own path in this ocean by following all the fish uh, that are similar to you. So I think uh, this was uh, so great because Yatura has to understand that this, he can't be like others, he has to find his own way. And okay, he can start imitating other painters, but then I'm pretty sure that he will find his own style based on some features, based on some things that are automatically calling other painters too. It's like a mangaka, right? Even mangaka, they take inspiration from other mangaka before, or they take some features, details, or subjects that are already explored and they follow their path. It's the same thing. I think uh, that's what's missing. Once Yatora can acknowledge himself and he can recognize that he also has a great talent and it's just about time, then he can focus on his thing and he can explore this path that he has chosen and create something marvelous. By connecting with what I was saying a few seconds ago, yeah, it takes time. Nothing is gifted. We always have to achieve our goals thanks to our experience. When Yatora thinks that he's inferior just because the others are better or because he's always next to genius or because of Takahashi, for example, he said that it was his first time to uh, recreate the, the sculpture by drawing it. Okay, yeah, there are some special talents in this world. There are some geniuses in this world, for sure. But that doesn't mean that you cannot become great as well. Some people have the talent, this inner talent that other people don't have immediately, but that doesn't mean that this talent will not come. It will come a little bit later, but this doesn't mean that it's impossible. So Yatora has to understand this. The more he is underestimating himself, the more it will take time for him to achieve this uh, awareness. Another thing I want to say is uh, about Takahashi. I think that what Yuka said to Yatora was uh, so true. When she was he or she, but later we will talk about this subject too. Yuka was uh, saying to Yatora that you still have time to grow. And when you have uh, that time to grow, it's still uh, exciting. It's still great to achieve goal after goal, when, especially when you push yourself and then you see the results. It's so amazing the feeling you have uh, while you understand that it's not over yet, that your path is still so long and the more you achieve step after step, the more you achieve awareness and you are able, that means you achieve your abilities to uh, become even greater than before. But when you reach the level of a Takahashi or when you have this inner ten talent like he has, mm, sometimes the satisfaction is a little bit different because if you're a genius and if you do everything perfectly all the times, without making a mistake, without pushing yourself as much as the others, uh, you feel as if uh, everything is so easy and there is no satisfaction. There is just a, a repetition of events without uh, a change of the feelings. Because if you know that you can do it, if you know that you can do it perfectly, 
Okay, thank you. Ah, when you, especially when you hear your teacher saying, ah, you made this thing so perfectly. Okay, yes, I know, I know, I know. Because all people are repeating to this person, in this case, Takahashi, the same things. So the satisfaction is gone, totally gone. While Yatora should appreciate the fact that he has lots of steps to take, he has lots of steps to reach, and this can create excitement, this can create satisfaction, this can create several mixed feelings that other people maybe can't feel because they already reached that goal. And that's why I think that <clears throat> Yatora's path is more enjoyable, and he also should understand this. Maybe he will understand this just uh, when the path will be over and he will go back, uh, thanks to his mind, to those moments in which he thought that he was uh, talentless, but that was just a matter of time and he didn't enjoy the properly those uh, steps. I hope that in the next episodes, uh, Yatora will find more self-confidence and he will be able to accept the fact that he is not perfect, he is not super talented like Takahashi, but later he can become. He has to push his own mind like this in order to find the confidence later. Going back to uh, Takahashi, I think uh, that um, Takahashi's life probably is a little bit empty as much as uh, his drawing. Do you remember that when uh, Yatora was uh, checking his first drawing, he was uh, saying, I can feel a silence uh, thanks to this painting. Yeah, because maybe Takahashi's life is uh, full of emptiness, uh, full of uh, loneliness. And that's why even his drawings are reflecting his mind or his mental state or his condition, life, a social condition. Even when Yatora tried to talk to him, I saw that Takahashi was reluctant, he didn't want to talk, he preferred to skip some subjects, he preferred to look down or look somewhere else instead of looking at him, and this is a sign of insecurity. Maybe in the future they are about to explain his background story, and maybe thanks to that we can understand what happened, why it happened, and why he has this type of personality because usually, yeah, even the personality can reflect the drawings and even the drawings can reflect the personality of the drawer. So that's the power of art. And in fact, as we said in the previous episode, art is a strange language. And instead of words, you use paintings. Instead of words, you use paintbrushes or what else. But it's a powerful language because thanks to art, you can convey special messages or you can narrate part of you. So that's why I love this story because the more we go on, the more we can feel what Yatora and all the others are feeling because in a moment of our life we all have had this feeling in which we are empty, in which we are lonely, in which we are confused, in which we are frustrated and things like this. So this is a great story because of this too. Talking about Yuka, wow, I've never expected to touch this subject with this story and that's why I am, I am totally amazed because I was always convinced that Yuka was a woman. Then when she was talking to Yatora and Yatora immediately said, did you tell him that you're a man? I was like, what? Wait, 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 wait. I didn't even realize this. Then all these huge subject of uh, people who decided to pass from one gender to the other is uh, such a sensitive subject. And here in this story, in this episode, it was explained so well. I feel Yuka totally. I understand her pain. Uh, even if I didn't experience the same things uh, she he feels, it was really nice to see how she was describing her feelings in that moment, why she was sitting on a bench. She was uh, free to express all her sadness, all her frustration, all her... Okay, I use her because she wants to be a girl, actually, and that's why I prefer to respect her will. But yeah, the frustration that she felt when that man, that colleague, 
was just the same to her, sorry, you are normal. I mean, when you keep on underlining those sentences, um, it makes you feel frustrated. Especially if you decide to change the gender or if you decide to start this huge, immense and sensitive path. You don't admit sentences like these, ah, you're normal, don't worry, or everything will be fine, or ah, don't worry about what other people say, because anyway, no matter how much you underline these sentences, the more this person who wants to start this path, you don't like to hear these sentences. You feel as if they are judging you anyway. What does it mean, you are normal anyway? Yes, she is, or yes, he is, no matter the gender they want to choose. I think all people should feel free and normal to be whatever they want. And in fact, even in this subject, we understand that this is the message the author wants to convey. To be free, to do what you like, to be free to follow your instincts, to be free to choose your own path, to be free to choose your path for your life and not to choose the path of your life because of others, to be free to do what you really want to do without being ashamed. I hope that Yuka will find the proper confidence to find her place in the world, to erase from her mind, even if it's so difficult, those stupid sentences that people are saying that make her feeling frustrated more than ever. You're normal, I don't worry. Even being rejected, I think that mm, it's so painful because one thing is to be rejected because you're not corresponded, and one thing is to be rejected because of the gender you belong to and the gender you would like to belong to. This is totally different. After you are rejected, you are abandoned or you are left aside or you are bullied or you are feeling ashamed for yourself for your decisions to be free to be what you want to be this is something that shouldn't happen in the world like we live in and this is a realistic subject unfortunately but in the world we live we should all be free to do what we like and to be what we want to be so i hope that in the future, thanks to this story, uh, Yuka can find uh, a person who is accepting her for what she is because she finds herself as if she is a girl. And this is the most important thing, to follow what she wants to do and what she wants to be. She's totally right when she was explaining in a, such a beautiful way the way she feels. The, the way she feels when she is getting in touch with other girls the, the fact that she can understand girls' problems because she thinks that she is a girl and she has that sort of empathy or sensitivity that is typical of a girl. And that's why, look, as much as I saw her, I thought that she was a girl. And it was not a problem to me to think that she was a girl because actually she is. One more time, this story is uh, inspirational. And I am so grateful to myself, I wanted to underline this over and over again for following this story because, as you can see, we are facing lots of uh, important subjects, realistic subjects that are making our society too. I think the author made a great choice to underline these things that are not just regarding art, but even the inner core of yourself. And wow, I, I admire this author so much. And no matter in what condition you feel, no matter the context that you live in, you just have to remember one thing. If you live your life at the fullest, you can be happy for it. If you have the chance to be free to do what you want, don't care about what other people say. Don't care if they insult you, don't care about if they offend you, don't care if they bully you, don't care about what's outside, because it's not their life, it's your life. So you have to be the owner of your life and do what you really want to do. The rest, it's happening later, it doesn't have to cause you troubles, it doesn't have to get your attention, because the most important thing is your life and how you handle 
your life, no matter what's around you. So feel always free to be yourself. Don't worry because people always judge, but it's up to you to pay attention on them or not. And I suggest you not to pay attention on them because one day they will get tired. If they are ignored, they will get tired because they don't have the attention they want. So my suggestion is feel always free to express yourself the best as you can because life is now and we don't know what's happening tomorrow. So if you like to paint, if you like to sing, if you like to dance, if you like to do whatever you want, if you like yourself more than the rest of the world, if you think that you wanted to change your gender and be yourself for real, feel always free to do what you want. No matter the consequences, no matter people who are going to abandon you, they are going to bully you, etc, etc. These people don't matter. Your life matter and you always have one chance because your life is one only. We don't have other chances. At least we don't know if there is another life after this one. So it's better not to waste the time and not to waste our passions because of others. Let's live now because later we don't know. Okay, guys, for this episode, that is it. I hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned because the next Saturday I come back with episode 4 of a Blue Period. In the meantime, feel free to subscribe to the channel and click on the notification bell. Bye, guys. See you in the next video.